Hi everyone, here's Arkady again. Last week we were looking together on the first part of my video about influence of substrate on the laser cladding process. Today I will give you a second part of this video. We're going to look together more about different substrate types and what do you might require by working on those substrates. Mostly we work with the ferros, materials as a substrates, and in 90% of cases, we do work with iron-based substrate or base materials. What are general rules for iron-based substrates? The less alloyed steel is a milled steel, which has usually a little bit of carbon and manganese. In this term, you always get a good cladability, almost no matter which hard facing material or laser cladding material you put on top. There is no issues with that. However, if you go deeper, primary group of materials which mostly used are alloy steels, and you have an additional amount of certain alloying elements like chromium, molybdenum, vanadium, nickel, and others, those substrates typically can be found in boiler tubes, pistons, and there you already get a small risk of cracks and heat affected zone because of hardenability. And in that case, you should think about how can I improve interaction with my substrate by preheating, by using buffer layer, or by selecting the right material approach. More complex it gets when you go direction two steels, which are primary repair business market. And here, the risk of cracking and heat affected zone, especially cold crack, because usually you have to repair with the hard materials, you get really in trouble and here main advices from my side might be related to preheating prolonging cooling time so ensuring you need the cooling conditions and in many cases you will also need post heat treatment in that case you can get a good quality coating another group of materials is related to stainless steels which might be austenitic martensitic and ferritic a couple of examples go in direction austenitic steels which are quite commonly used in boiler tubes rotor blades walls of different uh, plants. They are very good cladable, so you don't get any martensitic transformation. The only risk you have in a hot cracking. So you really have to see in an opposite way how you can avoid overheating in a melting bath and how you can avoid so-called heat uh, buffer. Martensitic stainless steels in, in opposite will get always or almost always, especially 400 series steels, uh, martensitic transformation, so your hardness values are growing extremely. You can get over 50 Rockwell, even with some materials like 420 steel. And there is, of course, a high risk of cracking. And uh, you should think about how you can prevent this martensitic transformation. So primarily, it's a post-treatment methods. And uh, last group here is related to ferritic steels, and those steels usually and might have issues with the grain grow and that can lead to cracking. So if you work with ferritic steels as a substrate, you always have to see that you do not put too much heat and put to the surface. So you see different steel groups and how differently you should behave. And knowing that you can avoid a lot of mistakes in your process. Final group is a cast iron. Cast iron is generally very critical uh, material to work with. What we learned if you work with ELA or high speed process, you can avoid a lot of interaction with substrate, you can avoid a lot of diffusion, and many materials can be directly applied to cast iron. In most cases, in laser cladding, what I've learned also based on my experiences, you work with extreme preheating or buffering, especially if it's go in direction of repair. Another group of substrates which you usually work with is elevated to aluminium alloys. They use a lot in automotive and aerospace industries, some applications in marine, due to excellent low density properties of aluminium. What are main highlights? You have a very low melting temperature, which makes the dilution control extremely difficult. So you also have a very poor coupling with the laser beam due to the low absorption of laser light and you might get dissolution of precipitations which form intermetallics and can lead to crack formations. What it makes also difficult due to the differences in melting temperature, there are really very limited or almost not possible to work with iron, cobalt or nickel based materials to put them on aluminium substrates. 
What usually people do, they work with some intermediate layers or gradient coatings to make this process more feasible, or you go in direction high strength aluminum alloys, or in opposite, you try to work with copper based materials to improve certain properties of your aluminum alloys. Instead of laser cladding, also a laser alloying where you just inject certain hard particles into the surface of your aluminum alloys, which might be in titanium carbides or silicon carbides. This process is nowadays also well established and is quite commonly used in a couple of applications. Some other alloys just to give you highlights and uh, brief, brief understanding where we're looking for. You quite commonly look with nickel-based alloys, which behave very similar way to austenitic stainless steels. So the main risk you have is related to hot cracking, especially if you work with inconels. In case of titanium-based alloys, you should avoid interaction with oxygen primary. So you need a really strong shooting gas atmosphere, or you really need a vacuum chambers. And in some cases, you can try to work with wires where you get much better control of your conditions compared to powder materials, which help you to have a stable process. And the last group of materials is related to copper-based alloys, which is also very difficult to work with due to the back reflection and lower absorption of copper, leading to very complicated repair process. There are some companies who can do it, and this is also a niche product. You see, the topic of substrates, it's quite difficult. You have a bunch of selection of parameters, you have a bunch of selection of requirements if you work with certain substrates, and that it's not always easy. I hope you learned something, and I wish you to build your own understanding in a practical way about substrates, and let's stay in touch. Have a nice day.